I hope we are not locked in here. Because I want to go back there and use the save point after I just killed that gigantic rotting dragon. And now we're going to go in here. Somewhere inside of here is the Sun Crisp, and that's what we're going to need to go and maybe get more in that the site. Hey, friend. Something's written on the wall. Engraved by someone, it seems. Hmm. It's quite old. Lo, seeker in days unborn, God blade bearer. Know you, this tower challenges the sky. Where the watcher, the ward of the three weights, soul hungry, unsated. He without power, want it not. He with power, trust it not. He with sight, heed it not. Rend illusion, cut the true path. In blood, wraith wall. The Dynast King? <laughs> Does it startle you? The Dynast King took his sword from the Ocuria. It was here he claimed the Nethysite. He must have known he was not the last the Ocuria would choose. He left this for you. Rend illusion, cut the true path. Words of much mystery, yet his blood runs in your veins. Perhaps it whispers to you the truth. Okay, we've reached the first level. I am honestly not... Uh, I'm at a loss of understanding why uh, Ash was shocked to learn that King Wraithwall had been here at one time and went and... Okay, I got nothing to do here. Had been here before. I don't know why she's confused about that fact. I adjusted the volume a little bit. I don't know why she's confused about that fact, because I'm pretty sure that's something we, we have known about for quite some time, that the, maybe not the involvement of the Acuria, because that's, um, that's something kind of new to us, but the, but the, um, idea that the Dynast King was given the sword in order to cut off pieces of Nethysite to use on the, uh, to use to create his empire. And, I mean, later on we came to understand the idea about the Acuria, about there being these godlike creatures that have been intervening in the lives of the Humes. That's gotta be a mimic. There's no way that's not a mimic. Haha. <laughs> so, looks like Ash is all acting confused in fact for no freaking reason. Vaughn's supposed to be attacking someone? Carry. Really? That gigantic turkey carry? Uh, another thing I forgot to mention in the last episode, or just didn't have time to mention in the last episode, was something that Valfir had mentioned 
back when we had first arrived. Oh, Black Orb, Black Orb, get it. Okay, you get the Black Orb. That's what we're doing here. You go and you take the Black Orb, then you go over to the pedestals that I was looking at earlier, and you put the Black Orb there, and then you're good. Okay. Balthier was saying that if something were to happen to him, that then Vaughn would get the straw of his airship. We haven't used a ship a whole hell of a lot in this game. It's kind of weird that we have this airship, but we tend not to use it in the game. In fact, the airship is something that we've had. We've had the airship for quite a while in this game, but we haven't been using it. Only barely. But he's saying, like, something happens to me, you take the airship. Now, he's been kind of reluctant to say anything about Vaughn being, like, an apprentice of his. Maybe I need to get another one of those things. Saying, no, oh, I don't have an apprentice, Vaughn isn't my apprentice, but he clearly is. And we happen to, to know by now since our time in Arcades, that the reason why Vaughn wanted to be a Sky Pirate and the reason why Bothir became one are very similar, that they were both sort of running away from their past. The, Vaughn wanted to get away from the fact that he was living in this conquered city, his brother was killed by a traitor, or, or at least he thought he was killed by, the tra by a traitor, while trying to defend his homeland against the invaders and, and all that kind of stuff. Basically running away from his problems is exactly what Balthier was doing. So, and, I mean, Redis now at this point, we've also learned that he is... I mean, whatever he's running away from it has something to do with the destruction of Nabudis. But he's running away from that, so that seems to be a reoccurring thing. But it's, uh, but it's just something I'm trying to point out, that that's the... I knew that was a, wasn't a mimic, because the color was different. It's a, it's a common thing, but it's something that apparently they can sort of bond over. Interestingly, I figure that Balthier and Redis have a mutual respect for each other, but I don't think they're particularly friendly with each other. Kill it! Kill it now! Oh wow, this thing's taking a beating. Looks kind of like the boss that we had fought when we were escaping from the waterway in the early parts of the game. Oh, that was some wasted magic, but whatever. The enemies in this area aren't particularly difficult. I imagine they're going to get tougher the further into the dungeon we get. <laughs> a couple episodes ago, I tried making an episode. I tried doing something kind of goofy. I made an episode where all I did was I went and tried to do a hunt. Do, you know, the um, Black Orb. Okay, there's. There's one more black orb we have to get in this area. But I gotta go in. Oh, I don't have the complete map yet. Okay, I'm pretty close to where I can drop this one off, though. I, I tried making an episode where I went and I did a hunt. In this game, as in a lot of the Final Fantasy games, there's a character known as Gilgamesh. And it's like a reoccurring enemy slash summon slash character. In, exists in various forms throughout the throughout the different installments of the series. In this game, Gilgamesh is like a legendary warrior or something like that. Is going and uh, and you have a 
hunt that you can go and do to hunt down Gilgamesh. Now, hold on, I'm... Okay, I went the wrong direction. I wanted to go back to the altar to the, uh, in the center of the building and down that big spiral set up in order to in order to install this black orb, but I was going in the wrong direction. I was reading the mini-map wrong. Anyway, Gilgamesh, the fight against Gilgamesh in this game is completely optional. In fact, you have to progress pretty far into the game and then do a number of side quests and all that kind of stuff to even be able to complete the fight. Damn it, disable. <laughs> Kill that son of a bitch. Well, what I went and... I went and... No, oh, that's a mimic. <laughs> I went and I fought Gilgamesh. I beat him the first time because his fight is split up into two different battles. The first battle... I watch well, it. <laughs> the first fight went pretty easily. Went and kicked his ass. He didn't stand a chance against him. Then it progresses further, then Gilgamesh progresses further into the dungeon, into the, um, into the mines, is where you fight him. And he went and, well, became quite dangerous once he got further in, into the, uh, Lusu mines in Berjerba, is where he was. Then once he got further in and challenged him there, his levels were much higher, he was a much stronger enemy, and just kicked the shit out of me. And which is a shame, because I had gotten that far into the game with the intent of... Well, I died pretty quick. He must still have been low on HP from when I ran through earlier. I was sure that I could have taken him down, but, you know... <laughs> he was just too much for me. It was a shame, because I created the entire episode based on the idea that I was going to go and fight this guy, and I had recorded this long episode of me doing the little side quest beforehand and fighting him and beating him the first time, and then the second time I just couldn't do it. I mean, he was way out of my league, so I felt like I had wasted an entire episode, and now I can't go back and do it later because it wouldn't really make any sense because I had completed a little side quest, including the first battle against the Ogomesh. And I'd have to go and... I couldn't do that all again because the quests are already completed and I'm not going to save the footage of me doing it first time and then edit it in with later because it would, it would look weird and I just don't feel like doing it. And it's, I wanted to have this fight in there, it's just something I pointlessly felt like mentioning because it's going to be a long episode and I have to struggle to find shit to talk about. I know earlier on in the game I had made a mention that I Wally wasn't going to end up using a lot of one-handed swords in this game because the one-handed swords don't really have the same kind of damage output that the other weapons do, like the two-handed swords or the, the poles or whatever. I ended up definitely not working that way. Now I'd always intended to have I'd always intended to have Vaughn use a one-handed sword and a shield. And that's the advantage that you get from having the one-handed sword, is you can use a shield, and the shield increases your evasion. It doesn't really increase your defense, but it but sets up an evasion where you'll block attacks using your shield, which can be quite useful, especially when you're playing as a character who's... really, you can think about him as being like the main character, the one that you're going to be using most of the time like I'm doing right now. Vaughn has the highest level, so I have him running point, and he's going to be taking the, taking the majority of hits. So, it made sense that I sacrificed some of his damage output in order to get him... Um... Oh, Black Orb. Give it to me. I think they dis disappear if you... Yeah, there we go.
Damn it, Ash, you did not pick a fight with that thing. I finally got my game set up properly where the characters will cure status ailments and will use um, elemental weaknesses against enemies. Notice Ash is tossing fire spells around here. Uh, her and, and Penella will do the same thing because they're both good with magic. Uh, Fran, I can't remember if I did it with Fran or not, but she might have that same kind of setup. What was I talking about before? I lost track of my own thought. Here's the last one. Seal of Night. Now we have to go back a ways and open a door that we were looking at earlier. It'll take us up to the second floor. Is that the right way? Is that the right way? Yeah, that's the right way. But this is... Yeah, okay. Man, this is a labyrinth here. Really pain in the ass to find your way around through here. If you don't know what you're supposed to be doing, I imagine you can spend a lot of time in playing this game. Trying to get through these dungeons. Something that really messed me up the first time playing through here. Uh, something that I wasn't sure if I was going to mention or not, but I'll do it now anyway. Because, you know, lots of time to talk. Mimic! What's that called? A Mimo? Mimo? <laughs> Things rolling around on the stairs. Now, I wasn't sure if I was going to mention anything about this or not, but back when I first played this game, what was this release back in 05, 06, something like that? I had gone and played through the game. But in the beginning, when they started, like, they had all those cutscenes, and they started naming off the names of a bunch of different places, and character names, and all that kind of stuff, and I, I wasn't, my eyes glossed over, and I wasn't keeping track of the names, I wasn't keeping track of a lot of the story, so a lot of the stuff started confusing me, like, like, what in the hell's going on? So, I sort of stopped paying attention to parts of the story, and then I got up to the point where, uh, the, hmm, look at that thing. I got up roundabout to this point in the game, and I got stuck. I'm thinking, I don't know what the hell to do. It's a turtle without a face. And I got stuck, I didn't know what the hell to do, so I went and, um, did nothing. I stopped playing the game for, like, two or three weeks or something like that. Which is weird, because, uh, because I usually, once I get drawn in, I can't stop. But I got, I stopped, and I stopped playing the game for a few weeks. And when I came back to it, I tried playing it again, and I couldn't figure out how to get past the boss or anything like that. It was really just kicking my ass. And I came to the conclusion that I really just didn't understand the gameplay mechanics as well as I thought I should. And it's absolutely true, I didn't. Because I wasn't... I was just sort of coasting through the game up until that point. Blind! They're, uh... You're not gonna heal your own blind? Weird, I thought I had Gambit set up for that. I didn't, uh, and since I was coasting through the early parts of the game, I didn't understand the gameplay mechanics, the battle mechanics, how to, what idea of a good weapon was, all that kind of stuff. Ah, damn it. <laughs> the near the magic. Try it anyway. Ash, hit him with something that hurts. 
You know what he's probably not immune to? Quickenings. So once I, I decided, you know, this, I got this all along, I'm going to start again. And I actually started the game over again from part one, like from the very beginning of the game. And then I'm like, as I did that, it gave me the better understanding of the story up until that point. Because I actually started paying attention to it because I realized what I did wrong. And my understanding of the gameplay mechanics was so much better that I was a little concerned once I got back up to the boss I was stuck on that I wasn't going to be able to beat it again, but the fight just went over so smoothly or like it wasn't even a challenge. Tell you the truth, I'm not entirely sure if what I'm doing right now is the best idea going and throwing a bunch of quickenings at this thing, trying to defeat it that way. It was immune to physical attacks, it was immune to magic. What does that really leave? I guess maybe throwing items at it, like not a rust or something, if I heard it. Maybe it's just a temporary thing? Hell, I don't know. I'm not even entirely sure if these quickening attacks are going to do any damage to it, or they're all just going to bounce off of it and do no damage whatsoever. That would be unfortunate. On the other hand, it could be exactly what I needed to do, and this will kill it. Not a lot of level one quickening is going on here. It's not what I want to see. How about some of this? Got a surprise for you. That's a level two. That's better. Recently, when I've ever been doing the quickening in these battles, I've been cutting them out. Because no one wants to see this going on over and over again. I don't know why I'm not doing it now. It's such a long episode to begin with. Didn't want to, um... Ah, so close. I could have cut this out and cut like a minute off of the, end of the video. But no. Some idiotic reason I decided not to do that. Torrent. Not even a good attack. That's pathetic. No damage. Are you kidding me? No damage at all. Okay. Yeah. I went and I looked up real quick to see what it was that was happening here. And this is a like a thing that happens in the battle that just he's on a timer, a countdown timer, and he'll go and eventually he will become susceptible to damage again. But right now he's going to just be uh, he's going to be invincible for a little while, and there's not a damn thing I can do about it. So I just have to sort of survive long enough until he starts taking damage and, and then I can go and start kicking his ass. So I went and I... I, <laughs> I guess it's maybe why they, they did what they did there by having him become immune to damage. So maybe you'd go and use quickenings like... I took the bait there. <laughs> like an idiot, I took the, took the bait. And I burnt away all of my MP, so now I can't cure the characters very effectively. I mean, Ash still has her high potions, but I only had something like 15 that was left, because they're not particularly useful items anymore. And, um... X potions are harder to come by. I know it says you can buy them at certain stores, but I'm not finding them there. So I'm just running in circles trying to build up my MP, so... You know, I can not die. She is definitely going to burn through all those high potions. Okay, he's taking damage again. Finish him off. He 
this new Arise spell that I have basically does the same thing as Raise, bringing your characters back from unconsciousness, but it also um, restores all of their HP. So you can. You don't have to worry about having to cure them real quick. Down Redisco's. Since he's an extra member, I'll raise him. If any of the other characters go down, they're getting replaced with Balthier. This thing's almost dead. But you know. No excuse to get sloppy. Bot is down. Balthier is a more powerful character right now, anyway. I could probably just use his quickening chain now. In fact, you know what? I'm gonna do that. I don't think I did enough damage. Definitely didn't do enough damage. But you know, we're pretty close to the end of the fight anyway. And it dies once Vaughn goes down, so he doesn't get any of the spoils. Huh. Okay, we have been returned back. Magic's binding the waystone fade. Okay, this door was some sort of illusion or something like that. And we can now return back to the main hall that we were in. The waystone that would not have worked beforehand will work now. So, there we go. See, I'm going the right way. Actually, either way probably would have worked. I'll go the way with fewer enemies. <laughs> Gigantic turkey thing! Speaking of the battle I had tried to do against Gilgamesh, before you have to go into... Uh, before you can go and progress further in to fight Gilgamesh in the second battle, you need to go and perform a second hunt against, um, I forget what it's called, but it was another, it was another fairly powerful hunt, something that takes a bit of effort to kill. But once you kill that thing, you have a chance of picking up a, a, uh, a weapon that I now have equipped on Fran. Let's go to that. I forget what it's called. That is an ultimate weapon. The most powerful gun in the game. If you can find, uh... There's a black orb here. I don't think I need it, but I'm okay, good, okay. It's the most powerful gun in the game. Now, remember guns are... Their mechanics work a little bit different than the other weapons do. Other weapons, you have your... Your attack power tends to be pretty high on most weapons, and that's mitigated by effects like the defense level of the the defense stat of the enemy that you're hitting. And then on top of that, you have uh, shit. I can't go this way. It's mitigated by the defense stat of the enemy and all that, and several other things. For... Shit. <laughs> I 
there's an iron for the map. Would be nice if I'd gotten this beforehand. It's kind of useless now. Doesn't have enough magic to do anything. Run! Run, bitch, run! But with guns, it doesn't work that way. It, all guns work based on the idea that enemies have no defense stat. So you go and you you want to use the a gun to attack an enemy, regardless of what their defense stat is. It's going to do like the it's going to do the same level of damage against them, whether they have high defense, low defense, whatever. And of course, there are some changes like if you have. Um, like, it is based on a sort of random number of calculations, so it's not going to do the exact same damage every time. So, because of that, even though the... Even though the character's defense is high, your low... The... Damn it. <laughs> the magic tax... Damn it. Where's Redis? He's not even here. <laughs> Oh, he's coming. The offense of the strength stat on a uh, on a pistol doesn't use the strength stat of the character itself, which is why Fran is using it. She has low strength, so does Pinello. I thought about giving Pinello guns, I still might. So even though she is weak character, she can still do damage. Even if it's not the whole hell of a lot of damage, it's still quite useful. Other than Pinello running around trying to use physical attacks on enemies for some stupid reason. Guns are good to use against armored enemies used by characters who have low strength stats. That's basically what I'm trying to get at here. Kind of a bad team I have selected here. I should put the effort into resurrecting the other characters because, I mean, Pinello and Fran are not good characters. And Ash is. Ash is a good character, but she has a somewhat low defense stat, which is made even worse by the fact that I have light armor on her. I have cloth armor on her with the idea that I want her to be able to use powerful magic which I'm not doing right now, like an idiot. She doesn't have much in the way of magic. <laughs> magic points. But I gave her cloth armor instead of, like, heavy armor. Black Orb, give it to me! So her defense stat's even lower, plus the fact that she's using a... She's using a bow and arrow as opposed to, like, a melee weapon, so her attack stats reduced somewhat. So we don't really, the only, like, character can really tank the enemies is Redis, and I don't have any control over what he does, so I'm definitely not doing this right. My thought was, when I first started doing this, was that I would just have these characters returning me back to the save crystal, the gate crystal, and then I would use it from there to go and resurrect my other character so I wouldn't waste any time, but this is turning out to be a bit of a pain in the ass. In fact, a little, a minute ago when I was over on the other side around where I picked up the map, I almost, I almost uh, died. I think it's parrying our arrows, it's ridiculous. Black Orb! I don't know if I can pick up more than one of these. I don't even know if they have, I can use these anymore. Kill it, what's the deal? This thing is weak against fire. Burn it! Burn it down! I thought I had killed it. Eh, 
Eh, if I get them using their appropriate magic and all that kind of stuff, that can be quite useful. This thing's weak against holy. I don't have any uh, holy spells, do I? Um, Black Orb! Pinello, in particular, against these guys is pretty much useless. She's using, trying to attack with her physical staff and doing like 200 some HP of damage. Now, if this were the beginning of the game, that'd be pretty good, but not right now. I mean, come on. For now, I should. I mean, what is that weapon that she's using even doing for her right now? Is it raising a magic stat or anything? I gotta be careful about that. And we can move on now, of course, at 36 minutes and 22 seconds. This episode's been going on for quite a while. 